Hi there, everyone. Well, it's June 20th, and it's a really nice day outside, finally. I think we really earned one at this point. Um, today, for you, I have a new format of video. I watched a video by, um, I'm not sure how to say the first half of his name, but Mr. Squirrel is how his students address him in school, and I'll put a link to the video. They're called Pens in Youth videos. Um, and I thought, you know, I got a couple minor things to do with my pens, and I wanted to talk about a recent problem I've been having and try to solve that sort of in front of you. And I think I'm going to try to do that today. And so we're going to turn the screen around and go to the pens. And the first thing I'm going to do is show you how I keep my pens. Um, I have this really beautiful pen case uh, from Fountain Pen Revolution. And I really favor the pen roll variety because I like the way these can fold up into practically nothing. You can wrap the strap around them and stuff them in your pocketbook and they're perfectly safe. So that's really ideal for me. Um, it's really buttery soft leather. If I had only one tiny complaint about it, I'm just a little concerned that this strap may eventually wear out because it's a little bit thinner than I would prefer, but I think they just, you know, the leather is so beautiful. And even the strap, like the more you use it, the softer this leather gets and the nicer it gets. Now, the very opposite of that is this. Unfortunately, this is a fake leather case. It just came with my Fude Nib pen right here, and it's probably the worst part of the pen. Like, I love the pen. I wouldn't give the pen up for the world, but this case is like the smelliest fake leather ever, and it drives me crazy. But anyway, sometimes if I don't want to bring this case somewhere, like my boat, for example, and I just want to carry a couple cheap pens, this is the thing I use. Um, so that gives me a maximum of eight pens to have in use at one time. And I kind of like that because if I get much more than eight, I'm going to forget to clean something and it will dry out and get gross, particularly in the summer. Now, my first task of the pen maintenance session is going to be, um, this, this is going to be the first inking up of my brand new Noodlers Conrad. This is a Northern Pike. I have never had a Noodlers pen before. I'm very excited about it. Um, I thought a long time about the Conrad versus the Ahab and my friend said her Ahab was more finicky than her Conrad. Um, so I thought, you know, let me just try the Conrad as a first pen just in case it drives me too crazy, you know. Um, I generally enjoy piston fill pens. It depends. They can be frustrating. I like good piston fill pens. Hopefully this will be one. I'm not ready to review it yet because I haven't used it for long enough. So we'll definitely come back to it. This is a Noodler's Conrad. Now, I guess I'm noticing that this is laying ink down fairly thick, which is kind of good because they did say that it railroaded and it's a, uh, Northern Pike is the name of the color. Oops. Feed ran dry. I was told about this. Yes, I was. All right. So the feed either has to come up or the nib has to come down. I can't remember how that works, but one thing they say about this is that you have to tinker with these pens to get them to write the way you like. And obviously, since I just took it out and inked it for the first time, I'm not there with the tinkering yet, but I will be. So with pressure, whoa, oh, goodness gracious, look at that. Now, I'm not sure if I widen the feet or adjust the nib at this time. I think I'm just going to try with adjusting the nib, but this shouldn't really be running out. Like to me, and I've seen this in other videos, I would have to say these feed channels probably need to be widened a bit, or at least that would be my take on this. Unless you were just going to use it for everyday writing, then the feed channels are probably good. Yeah. Whoa. 
just ran out again. So um, you definitely want the feed to be keeping pace with your writing. Now it could Roshizuku. Oops, this is Fuyu Gaki. There, it seems to be behaving better now when I'm writing at a normal pace. Um, and here's the narrowest strokes you can get with this, and then. I'm really not, I didn't get any railroading towards the end. And I think that was because of ink flow, not because of railroading. Let's see. Oh, darn. It's doing it again. I can tell you I would definitely lose patience with this no time. All right. Okay. Well, I'm going to toy around with that. So. From what I understand, you can widen the ink channels, you can deepen the ink channels, you can do a number of things to make this better. I know the Fuyugaki is a great ink for flex writing because I've used it in other flex pens and I've never had a problem. I love the Orochizuku inks. Um, so in this case, it's a flow issue and I'll try and straighten that out. That was the first pen. Okay, so going right along... Sometimes you have a pen that we call in the fountain pen community a Franken pen. And that's this one. The body is a universal um, uh, universal and I don't even know what the cap is. It's like something unrelated that just happens to really fit the pen. So it's a hooded nib. And if I had to guess, I'd say this is a fine. And the ink is, um, and I think it's running a little low on ink because it doesn't normally skip. It might be that it's just trying to make the Conrad feel better. It's a nice little writer, actually, normally. All right. That's that. And okay, so this is, I'm just showing you here that the nib is probably 14 karat gold. Um, this is going to be voiced over because I just speeded it up. I have a tendency to get bored when people do their uh, writing at normal speed for pen reviews. Although I do like them. They have their own charm. Um, but I thought here we'd just speed it up and I'd voice it over. So this is, uh, Waterman, um, Valais, and I'm using Diatromenis, a document black, and it's something called Formula 60. Uh, the gentleman who runs the Diatromenis company sent me these new formulations of the document black to try, and I'm, I'm pretty excited to do that. So Formula 60, I think, is the finest one. It's probably for fine nibs and things like that. And this is my Lancivi Duke Fude nib. And here I'm just showing you how line variation isn't available to be had in the normal sense of the word. It's more the direction that you turn the nib. So that's my improvised fake Chinese character there. And... um that's uh, showing how that works because it's intended to write Chinese. And this is an Eclipse. Um, this is a 20s era. It needed priming because there's, there's always some holes in the cap for the pressure to balance. Um, sack fill pens are very sensitive to uh, barometric pressure changes. So yeah, that's a 20s era um, 14 karat gold nib flex pen. And it's it's beaten up. It doesn't have a clip. I bought it that way. But look at that thing go. It can flex. Uh, the feed keeps right up with it. it. has one slight disadvantage of occasionally dripping. Particularly sensitive to temperature changes. As are all sack fill pens. 
so I'm cleaning the nib off here and moving right along to the next one um, oh yeah that had diamine ancient copper in it I'm not sure if I just said that and this is my Pelican M200 this is my absolute favorite pen to draw with it has quite a lot of flex even though it's not considered a flex nib I love the line variation um, it is a steel nib pen which is very odd because of the, the degree of line variation this is Diatremenus Document Black Formula 120. Um, it's slightly thicker than the Formula 60. And the standard Document Black, like if you were to buy that in a store, it would be Formula 150. So it's very thick ink. And I was having difficulty with the flex pens. I guess I want to say thick. It's heavily pigmented. So I think he, he dilutes it for the other formulations. So that was the Pelican. And then, last but not least, I have a pen I'm not going to write with right now because it's a mess. This is um, my Fountain Pen Revolution um, Guru, and I both love it, and right now I'm pretty mad at it. Like, I love it because it, it's a nice flex pen. I'm mad at it because it doesn't really adapt to the weather um, at all. And it drips everywhere, and it is... Um, the piston is uncooperative, and we're having problems. It's like a love-hate relationship. You know how you have a problem with somebody, and you're just like, oh, you're driving me crazy, but they're like family, you know? Well, that's kind of how I feel about this pen. It's like family, but I hate it because I'm mad at it. All right. So I just got rid of all the ink in this pen because it's been driving me nuts, and it needs to come apart. First thing I'm going to do is rinse it with this kind of like water that's just. This will just make it clean enough. All right, now you little booger, you're coming apart. Okay, so the way you take one of these puppies apart, and here, I'm going to shut this book now because we don't need it anymore. So you just grab it, like, I should have that grippy stuff with me, but I don't right at the moment. Ah, well, it came out using the cloth. So, all right, I'm going to put those two parts in there so they can clean themselves and now I'm going to dissemble this puppy. And that's going to be hard because basically it's supposed to be set up so that the... All right. So you what you want to do is I guess you go all the way back. You retract the piston like that. Push it all the way down. And then you crank it a few extra times. And it makes that noise, which is sort of frightening. And then you should go back in here, he said, and try and just pull the piston out. Oh, yes! That thing was so stuck in there. I'm totally glad I did that. I just tried it again and it worked. Okay. So now I have to re-grease this whole thing and all that. I basically didn't grease it enough on the piston part. And ink was sort of oozing through here and getting onto the piston. I don't know if it, like, left another part in the barrel. Like, I don't think so. But it looks like there might have been a ring around there or something. No, maybe not. No, it's just rubber rings. These rubber O-rings. So, yeah. This is all uh, better now. And I'm happy. I'm tirade over. Yay. All right. Well, that was a dramatic pens in use video. Um, thank you for getting into it with me here and getting these parts apart, which is the problem I was having before. I just wasn't able to get that thing out. Um, I'm going to re-grease this and put it into action and try it out. Anyway, uh, sorry, everything was skipping. I don't know. I blame the weather, not the pens. I really, I'm really not sure what's going on here. Maybe they all just need a good cleaning. Maybe it's me. Maybe it's like astrology, like fountain pen astrology. Who knows? But anyway, I hope you guys all have a great day and we will see you next time. Bye.